In World War II, military equipment and vehicles were not throwaway items. I've covered in a previous video how weapons, vehicles and kit were salvaged after battles, repaired and reissued by all the armies, the US in particular having a very well-organized logistical group dedicated to reusing equipment. Airborne operations in particular were very kit-intensive, and a lot of the equipment, vehicles and weapons could not be easily recovered from battlefields, as being delivered by parachute or glider ensured that, initially at least, this equipment was actually landed behind enemy lines. However, an enormous and largely forgotten recovery operation was launched following one of the biggest airborne operations of World War II, Operation Market Garden in the Netherlands in September 1944, targeting one very valuable resource that had to be recovered for reuse – gliders. Market Garden was a scheme proposed by British Field Marshal Sir Bernard Montgomery to propel the Allies across the River Rhine much earlier than planned, enabling the British to penetrate the strategically vital Ruhr industrial region of Western Germany and hopefully end the war in the West early. The plan was deceptively simple. Three airborne divisions would drop ahead of the British 30 Corps armoured regiments to seize bridges from hopefully weak German defenders allowing the British armour to charge forward across the Rhine. The plan would involve an advance of 60 miles into German-held territory. The US 101st Airborne Division would drop to capture the bridges north of Eindhoven at Zon and Fagel. The US 82nd Airborne Division would seize the bridges at Grava and Nijmegen while the British 1st Airborne Division and the Polish 1st Independent Parachute Brigade would snatch the road bridge at Arnhem and the rail bridge at Osterbeck. 30 Corps would drive up the narrow road, relieving each airborne element in turn until it reached Arnhem and crossed the Rhine. Over the objective, first out were the paratroops. This bold venture was a far cry from the aerial invasion of Crete. Within the brief space of little more than three years, Germany has been left far behind in aerial warfare. Trained to a hair, the tough fighters of the Anglo-American Airborne Army were in action in a matter of seconds after landing. Their first task was to neutralize immediate enemy resistance and clear the way for the gliders to land without enemy interference. To land by parachute or glider upon uncertain ground still under enemy control is an adventure calling for the utmost resolution and courage. They are brave men who tackle such a task. At Arnhem, the Allies landed in a sector which the Nazis had to hold at all costs. Bad weather made Allied reinforcements from the air almost impossible. For sleepless days and nights, the Allied troops held out against overwhelming odds before they were withdrawn. German resistance was much harder than anticipated, and though the two US divisions were successful, the spearhead British 1st Airborne Division was very roughly handled by the Germans, and though they managed to hold one end of the Arnhem Bridge for several days, eventually what was left of the division was withdrawn. The majority of it, some 80%, however, were killed, captured or wounded. The amount of equipment used to move 34,600 men by parachute and glider was staggering. 1,438 C-47 transport planes carried the paratroopers, while the number of gliders involved was 2,160 CG-4A Wacos, 916 airspeed horses and 64 general aircraft Hamilcars. 
The gliders would be needed for future operations, and as many as possible had to be recovered. The British gliders were generally not recoverable because they were behind German lines, but the US ones could be salvaged as they lay around Eindhoven and Nijmegen, which remained in Allied hands following the failure of Market Garden. The Allies had been very dissatisfied with glider recovery efforts following the Normandy landings and determined to somehow get these valuable flying machines out of the Netherlands. Company A, 876th Aviation Engineer Battalion, was ordered to construct temporary landing strips near Son and Grave, from where temporarily repaired gliders could be flown to France for final repairs and reissue. From the 25th of September to the 1st of October 1944, three teams of 150 men each were flown in to effect field repairs on gliders deemed salvageable. Teams from the 61st Group actually began flying the gliders out to France on the 20th of October. These teams required a lot of supplies and equipment, which was initially flown from England straight to Brussels and then taken by truck to the forward areas. Later, flights were made directly into Eindhoven, involving hundreds of aircraft movements. The gliders were in all sorts of conditions. Some had been wrecked on landing and were too far gone to consider recovering. Many flyable gliders had been vandalised by Allied troops who stripped off these skins to waterproof foxholes and trenches, while enemy fire had severely damaged others. The weather had also taken its toll. The 82nd and 101st Airborne Division's positions were still within a few miles of the front. For example, the Grave area remained under German artillery fire until December 1944. The glider mechanics often came under small arms and mortar fire as well, and some units even captured German prisoners. The autumn rains caused the gliders to sink deep into mud, and special metal matting had to be placed under them to prevent this from happening. Initially, C-47s would land and pick up the gliders in the traditional manner, towing them out. But heavy rain caused the airstrips to flood, and another method of recovery was perfected. A special glider pickup device is used, designed to make the landing of a tow plane unnecessary. The glider is ready for a snatch pickup, but the tow rope snaps loose, springing back at the glider's nose. Another snatch pickup proves successful, demonstrating the practicability of retrieving a glider from a small pasture or relatively short takeoff strip. In October, a severe gale wrecked 115 gliders that were awaiting recovery, putting the program back severely. By the 22nd of November, a total of 111 gliders had been flown out. By the 28th of December 1944, this total had been raised to 281. But many of these salvage gliders were not popular, being worn out and patched up, and treated with great suspicion when they were reissued to the Tactical Transport Command. A further 90 fuselages and 373 tons of metal were salvaged. But overall, this difficult and time-consuming operation was not a great success, considering that a total of 3,140 gliders of all types and nationalities had gone into action in the Netherlands. The curse of Operation Market Garden continued to have serious repercussions for months after the fighting ended, as the glider recovery program's failure demonstrated. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.